I am very sure that most of you have went to the jeweler and purchased gold at least once in last 10 years or 15 years. So for purchasing the gold or for deciding the price of the gold, the process is a bit straightforward. It depends on the carat of the gold and it depends on the weight of the gold. So based on these two parameters, the price of the gold is decided. But if you compare it with the pricing of diamond, it is very, very complicated because the price of the diamond depends on its carat, depends on its length, width, weight, then its clarity, color. There are so many factors which decide the price of a diamond. And that's why it is very complicated problem statement for diamond industry to identify any diamond, diamond measure its parameters and then decide what is the right price for that particular diamond. So what we thought is if we can build machine learning model, which takes as input different properties, different parameters of the diamond and tells you what is the right price for this diamond, it would create a huge value for the diamond industry. And if this model can be extended, let's say in the form of mobile app, where you can take photo of a diamond and then that mobile app automatically measures various parameters related to that diamond and then gives you the right price of it, it would be helpful for the customers as well. So in today's video, what we would do is we would use the historical data, we would use some examples related to diamond properties and its price. And using that, we would train a machine learning model, which would automatically tell the price of a diamond. Hi guys, my name is Rohit and let's get started with today's project. So at the top, I am importing all the modules that we need. So we are importing Pandas, then we are importing Matplotlib and Seaborn for the visualization. In this particular project, I'm going to use XGBoost regression model. And then I'm also importing few evaluation parameters that we need. So let's start with the project. So the data that we are getting, these are the features we are getting in this data related to the diamond. So what is the carat weight of the diamond? Then what is the cut? What is the quality of cut? Because it also decides what is the price of diamond. Because the diamonds which have very high quality premium cuts, they are priced highly. Then what is the color of diamond? Then the clarity, this, this, this basically measures how clear a diamond is. So we have various parameters related to clarity. Then what is the depth? Then we have a table column, which, which gives width of top of diamond relative to its widest point, because this is also an important feature. And then we have length of a diamond, width of a diamond and depth of a diamond. So these are the parameters which decide the right price of a diamond. And the last column that we have is price. So this is the price of a diamond in US dollars. So what we would do is we would use examples of this diamond properties and its price. And we would train a machine learning model, which can automatically tell the right price of a diamond based on its properties. So the data that we are getting is in the form of CSV. I'm reading that data using read CSV function from pandas. And these are the columns we have, right? From the carrot cut color all the way up to its length, width, all the parameters we have. And then we have the price of a diamond as well as our last column. This is the column or this is the value we are going to predict using all the features that we are getting. In this data set, we have more than 50,000 diamonds. So we have data of more than 50,000 diamonds. So I think it should be good enough to use this data and train a model which can automatically predict the price of diamond based on these features. So the plan is once we train the model, if you give it the properties of any new diamond, all these properties, it should be able to tell you the right price for that diamond. So it would help in diamond industry, basically in creating fair pricing, right pricing for the diamond. Okay. So using the info function, we can check the data types of the columns and along with that, how many non-null values are present in that particular column. So the data that we have, it's in total having 53,940 rows. And if you see here, all the values are non-null values and all of them are having the values in the column. So I don't think we have missing value problem in this particular data set. So after you apply describe function on your pandas data frame, you can get to know on your numerical columns what are the different statistical parameters? So let's say the carrot value, the minimum of it is 0 0.20 and the maximum is 5.01. Then the depth of a diamond minimum is 43 
maximum it's 79 and the average is around 61 similarly if you go to price column the minimum price that we are getting in our data set is 326 dollar and the maximum is more than 18000 dollar and the average price of the diamond is around 4000 dollars this is what we are getting over here so as i mentioned at the top we don't have any missing values in this particular data you can check the sum of missing values in every column using is any function and then calling sum function on top of that so you can see here we don't have any missing values in the data that we are getting so here what i am doing is i am just checking the unique values in every column so that we get better clarity about every column in which column we are getting categorical values where we might have to create a dummy features that's why it is good to check this so in caret column if you see we are getting lot of numerical values so this column is definitely something which we can use as a numerical feature in cut column we are getting unique categorical values ideal premium good very good and fair so we would use this column or we would use this feature as a categorical feature then we are getting various values in color and clarity as well so basically cut color and clarity these are the three columns where we are getting categorical values so we would create dummy features out of this when we want to give this data as a input to machine learning model then depth is again a numerical column table is again a numerical column then x y and z these three are also a numerical column again to repeat what exactly x y and z is don't get confused with x and y as features and let's say output to be predicted here x is the name of feature which is representing the length of diamond y is representing width of diamond and z is representing depth so it's length width and depth and the column that we want to predict is price okay so we can check the outliers on our data using the box plot so what i am doing is now i am plotting a box plot for every numerical column that we have and this we are doing using the box plot function from cborn so here i have basically created subplots 2 by 3 subplots because we are going to plot in total 6 plots so this would basically create 6 plots in two rows and three columns so if you see here the first plot is for caret so if we see the median value is around 0.7 and there are some values which are potential outliers so what you should do is when you work in the industry when you see these kind of potential outliers you can discuss with the industry expert so let's say if i was working with the diamond industry on this particular problem statement what i would have done is i would have spoken with the diamond expert and asked him that do we expect diamonds to have caret values let's say in the range of 2 to 5 if they say that yes the caret values can be in this particular range then these are not outliers this this is just a statistical outlier based on the mathematical formula but with the, before removing those outliers or before treating those outliers always check with your business experts subject matter experts to know whether that is actually outlier similarly for depth i would have checked with the diamond expert that do we expect diamonds to have depth let's say less than 55 and then based on the input that they are giving i would make my decision so you can create the box plots to identify the columns which would have potential outliers but you should always make your final decision or you you should always call something as outlier based on the domain knowledge and that's why in data science roles having domain knowledge or having good communications with the stakeholders who have strong domain knowledge is very very important for a successful delivery of the project okay so now i am creating a heat map based on the correlation matrix that we are going to calculate so we are calculating correlation between our numerical features caret depth table and length width and height information that we are getting so if you see here we have these three features x y and z which are which are representing basically the three important parameters related to the diamond and those three parameters are length width and depth of a diamond so these three parameters are having high correlation now here i don't recommend you to drop the features because they are like having high correlation with each other because all these three factors length width and depth are important in deciding the price of a diamond so even if these features have high correlation with each other 
I won't recommend you to go ahead and drop any of these features because again here your domain knowledge is important. If you, you can go back and ask your SME that do you think that all these three parameters are needed to decide the price of a diamond? If they say yes, there is no need to drop any of these features. Otherwise, you would lose important information which is important for deciding the price of a diamond. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a train test split on our features. So I'm calling train test split and features function which we have written over here. This is the function basically. Now in this particular function our y variable or the variable that we want to predict is the price. So we are storing that in variable y and from our features data frame we are dropping the price column because we don't want to use the value that we want to predict as a feature. So x basically has all the features now and y has the value that to be predicted. And here we are creating the dummy features because we have some columns which are in the form of categories. So we are creating dummy features for that or columns for that using the get dummies function from pandas. And after we do this, we are creating a train test split. So we are splitting our data into training set and testing set using the train test split inbuilt function from scikit-learn. So I'm keeping 20% data for testing and remaining 80% data for training. So basically using 80% of the examples of diamonds, we are going to train our machine learning model and on the rest of the 20% diamond, we are going to evaluate our machine learning model. So after we do this step, you can see here additional columns are created. So let's say for cut, we have created column for fair, good, ideal, premium and so on. So for the categorical columns, we have created basically dummy features here. So in total in our data now we have 26 columns. So this is the data where we have 26 features in total and this is how it is looking like. So if you see now every data point or every column is in the form of numbers. So our data is now ready for building a machine learning model. So our categorical columns, we have converted them also in the form of numbers. Okay, so the next step that I'm going to do now is we are going to evaluate and fit our machine learning model. So here I am initializing XGBoost regressor and then after that we are using grid search CV. So basically we are going to use cross validation to identify which are the best parameters on our data set. So we are using multiple parameters here learning rate which would decide how every subsequent model in XGBoost is going to contribute in the overall result because if you know the way in which XGBoost model works. So basically it's a boosting model. So every next model is going to improve the results of the previous model. So this learning rate decides how much every next model is going to contribute in overall prediction. Max depth decides the depth of decision tree which would be built in your XGBoost model. Subsample decide what's the percentage of the data points which would be used at every node for a split. And call sample by tree decides what's the percentage of the columns or percentage of the features which would be used. And N estimators is how many number of estimators or how many number of weak learners we are going to build. So this is the parameter grid and we are going to try these different sets of parameters on our data using cross validation. So I'm using five fold cross validation over here. And then this would tell us where we are getting the best result. And for evaluation for scoring in this particular case, we are going to use the R2 score as it's a regression model. So after we run this, we would get the results for every cross validation set and what kind of evaluation we are getting. So what I'm doing is for ease of reading, I'm storing these results in a data frame. So I'm reading it from the CV results and storing it in pandas data frame. And then I am sorting the values in the descending order. So this would give us the best possible result at the top. So in this data frame, basically we have the results for cross validation. So the best result that we are getting has mean test score 0.978. So this is the best R2 score we are getting. And then we have corresponding parameters for it as well. So basically in this data frame, we have what, which parameters we have tried and what are the corresponding results. So let me scroll to the right. Basically the best results we are getting for call sample by tree 0.8, parameter learning rate 0.3, max step 5, number of estimators 50 and so on. So using cross validation, you can know that for different sets of parameters, how your machine learning model is performing. And please remember that cross validation is applied only on the training data. Okay. So on training data itself, it is going to split the data into five sets based on the CV equal to five and four sets would be used for training and the last set would be used for evaluation every time. This is how cross validation works. 
So using search dot best params, you can know which are the best parameters on this particular data. So these are the best parameters we have found on this particular data using cross validation. Now the next thing that we should do is we should train the model on complete data set on complete training data set. So this is what we are doing now. We are creating a Xeboost regressor, giving it a parameters which we have found as the best parameters using cross validation. And then basically we, we are training the model on complete training data set. And after doing training, we are going to use this trained model for predicting the prices of diamond based on our test features. So we are doing that prediction using model dot predict. So using predict function, we are predicting the prices of diamond and the input to it is our test features. So we are storing the predicted values in XGB predict variable. So after we do this, we can calculate the R squared value, uh, which is used for evaluating the regression models. And that expects your original label, the Y test values and the predicted values. So if you pass it, you would get the R squared value. Now, in this particular case, we are getting R squared value around 0.98. So this is really a value which is near one. So we can say that the, the model that we have built is able to predict the diamond prices accurately in most of the cases because we are getting very high R squared value. The ideal value for R squared value is one. So the value that we are getting is near to one. So we have created very high quality machine learning model, which can predict the prices of diamond. And the mean absolute error we are getting in this particular case is 310. So we can say that this model would predict the prices accurately, but on an absolute term, there would be error of $310. Now this is the metric your business stakeholder would understand better. Business stakeholders won't understand the R squared value. This is for you as a data scientist to know the quality of your machine learning model. But when you speak with the business stakeholders, they would understand only the numbers, let's say in the form of money. So here you can say that the mean absolute error that you're getting is $310 or, or they can also identify or understand the percentage error. So you can say that the percentage error that you're getting in your machine learning model is around 9%. So these are the parameters your business stakeholders would understand and R squared score is for you as a data scientist to evaluate the quality of your machine learning model. So the model that we are getting is having absolute error, mean absolute error in terms of percentage around 9%. So it's not that bad. It is giving a right kind of a value for every diamond that we have. Now, after you build the model, if let's say stakeholders ask you which features or which parameters were considered by your machine learning model for deciding the price, then you can also answer that question by getting the important features. So using model dot feature importances, you can get the important features from the XGBoost model, which were used at the time of training for deciding the price of diamond. So based on this, what you can do is you can get the important features, store it in the form of data frame with a nice structure so that the results become really readable. So I won't explain this line by line because I think this is very straightforward. So if you see here, the first column that we are getting is the importance of the feature and the next column is the feature name. So, and I have sorted this data frame in the ascending order. So the least important feature is cut premium and the most important feature basically is our Y value, which is telling the dimension of the diamond that we have. And you can also create a nice visualization for this. So using a bar plot, you can plot your feature importances. And this is saying that, okay, the dimension of the diamond, basically Y and Z feature is very important in deciding its price. Then what is the carrot of the diamond? It is also important. The clarity of the diamond is also important feature. So using this feature importance, you can better communicate with your stakeholders that which features were used in deciding the price of a diamond, but ensure by that or make sure that you understand that this feature importance is based on the training time feature importance. If you want to know for every prediction that you're making, which features were considered, then you would have to use some localized method like Lime and Sharp for getting that kind of importance. This is a global feature importance at the time of training. Right. So this is how we have built a machine learning model, which can take important parameters, important features related to the diamond. And then based on that predicts its price. Now, this kind of a model would be very, very useful for the diamond industry. Now, what I want all of you to do is take different data sets from Kaggle and build similar kind of regression models that would help you to gain confidence in problem solving. And you can also add those projects in your CV. Thanks for watching the video and I would see you in the next one. Bye-bye.